Think about them, though. Think about how often we use cups, their purpose. And again, purpose being the key word. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. And the purpose of a cup. Definition of a cup. Small bowl-shaped container for drinking from, typically having a handle. Exhibit A. Oh. <laughs> we have a cup. Yes, it is. I will be very careful with it because I don't want to break it either. But cups do come in many different shapes, sizes. Um, we use them, again, not typically for drinking from. Sometimes you use them just to carry a water from somewhere, maybe water a plant. But we use them. Think about something so small, seemingly insignificant. Even the word cup. It's made with three curves in a straight line. <laughs> Think about it. One curve, two curves, another curve in the straight line. Very insignificant, very small. Oftentimes overlooked, but think of its purpose. Think where would we be without cups? Never thought of that, did you? Where am I gonna be? I might be using bottles. Hopefully we would have figured that out, but cups, again, seem insignificant. A cup itself might consider itself insignificant. Think, which would you rather have, a cup of coffee or a mug of coffee? I'm going mug, they're bigger. No offense to the cup. I'm going for a mug. Even better, I'm going to Starbucks for the big 20 ounce. You know, that's me. But cups have purpose. They're made from different materials, many different materials through the ages. Some were wood, some were glass, some made of precious metals. I give you the Stanley cup, my personal favorite. They can be made of paper, be made of plastic, clay. They come in different shapes, different sizes, different materials. We use them for different things. Yes, be out of aluminum, especially military. We use them for tea, coffee, soft drinks, chai, chai whatever anybody may want to imbibe. They oh. use cups. But each cup is designed with a purpose. No matter what we may think of them, they're small but significant. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we do thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. We do thank you for the air-conditioned building. Just these hot days, Father, we are grateful for these comforts we have. And Father, we thank you especially for this building that we have that we can come and meet and discuss our purpose, your purpose for us. And just thank you for this opportunity. In your son Jesus' name, amen. The simple cup of purpose, actually this lesson was called that I came across, been looking for something, and this caught my eye. It teaches us about ourselves. It's going to teach us about life, our purpose, our design. Like cups, we're all different. We all have different purposes. We all have different talents. We are all of a different design but we all fit here. We're all purposed by God. The one line I love this is, the bottom line is, cups matter, <laughs> but so do you. Have you ever felt insignificant? Have you ever felt that maybe I'm just not who I should be, or maybe what I'm doing isn't effective, or maybe well, they're better than me. I, I can't do it. I'm, I don't have that talent that that person has. I don't have that ability that that person has. And to feel insignificant, whether it's in your Christian walk or in life. Why didn't I get that job? Why does that person have more? To feel insignificant. I think at times we all go through feelings of inadequacy. But no matter how insignificant we may feel, we're all designed with a purpose. We're all designed for a purpose. And we're going to see that tonight. We've all been designed for more. 
And I keep bringing up the word purpose. Definition, the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Sounds like a slightly convoluted definition, but again, the reason for which something is done or created, for which something exists, that is its purpose. Again, purpose may seem elusive. We always know what our purpose is. What is our purpose as people? Well, no, but yes, yes, there are lots of purposes. What are purpose? What would be a purpose for us? Glorify God. Okay, glorify God. To love the Lord. To be salt and light. Again, these are purposes for us. Again, an action, a purpose, to have an intent or an objective. We're built, designed with purpose. We have a purpose that is our intention. That is our objective. We are here for a reason. Definition determines the reason which something was done, for why something was created. Why were we created? To glorify God, to be the salt and light. Our purpose is to live out that purpose and to be used, no matter how insignificant we may feel at times, to be used by God. If God's going to use you, are you insignificant? Not at all. Again, we have a purpose. And sometimes, as we're seeking our purpose, we miss it when it's right in front of us. We get busy, our daily lives, what we go through. Sometimes, do we miss our purpose? Do we miss an opportunity to live out our purpose? Because we let other things get in the way. To remember why we're here. The final thing is, Overflow. What is it to overflow? Well, again, definition is to flow over. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That was the definition. Thank you, Webster. But to overflow, especially a liquid, is to flow over the brim of a receptacle, just like it sounds. You overfill it. Overflow is different than spillage. I spill things often. Just telling you, I do. I try and drove my dad nuts. I would change the oil on my own car. I would watch my dad. He never used a funnel. He didn't have to. He would just pour it right in. I can do that as it pours all down the engine block onto the garage floor. <laughs> and then as we move the car out, you're wiping up the garage floor because I spill it. I still try to do it with cooking. A little bit of olive oil. No, I'll just pour this one in. You think I learned by now? It's oil. Get a funnel. It's just <laughs> what happens. Overflow is different. A spill, it's a mistake. It's sloppy. I never, ever leave my coffee cup in the cup holder on a golf cart unless it has a sealed lid because it's going to spill. I don't want to waste it. Overflow is different. Overflow would be to take it and pour and just keep going until it runs over the edges to the point where the contents spread to all of its surroundings. But to keep pouring until the contents affect its surroundings. Overflow pushes past the limits of containment and it'll affect all that's around it. Keep that in mind when we talk about being filled with the Spirit, to be overflowing. When we are overflowing with the Spirit of God, when we are living our purpose, we will affect what is around us. And if you've ever spilled something, watch what happens. In fact, I recommend go home tonight, put a cup out, and just start pouring water into it preferably in your sink or room. And watch, it will, it will just spread and affect everything around us. Think about that for us, as we should be overflowed and overflowing. John 30, uh, 7, 37 and 38 says, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. 
He that believeth on me, the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Again, no, it doesn't specifically say overflowing here, but think about it. Cups and vessels are mentioned many times in the Bible. Many, many references to them. We're going to talk about a couple tonight, but obviously not get into all of them. But the idea of being filled to overflowing, referenced by Christ in these verses, relates to God's call and purpose for each of us. The river, the, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. They're going to flow out of you, overflow out of you to where it affects those around you where it affects everything around you. Not just people, but even yourself. We've been designed as a cup of purpose to be overflowed. Picture God as the potter, us the clay. The psalmist giving praise for his cup that overflows, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. The message of God's plan, his purpose for our life, what he has for us, it's not hidden. Where do we find God's purpose and his plan for our lives? Micah. Okay, Micah. But in his word. Yeah. Yes, in the Bible. We find his plan, his purpose for us in his word. But again, in order to find it, we have to be searching. We have to be looking for it. It's not hidden. It's proclaimed boldly throughout scripture. But you have to be in it in order to find it, to know what his purpose is. Today, actually, go back, the night before Christ gave his life on the cross, he spent time with his disciples, the Passover, showing them a picture. We hear him as he instructs what to do, how to eat, drink the cup, and remember. He's instructing them. Still today, what do we do as believers, typically on the first Sunday of the month? Again, think this coming Sunday as we celebrate communion, the Lord's Supper. Think of what the instructions are. We both remember the sacrifice of Christ. We look back and remember what he did, but we also look ahead to his return. We look forward to the hope that we have of eternity with him because of what was done on the cross. Again, Think of the cup. And this Sunday, the cup comes around. Think about what it means when we take the cup. Again, it's a small, seemingly insignificant vessel. Think of the power that is in that little vessel, that little cup, what it represents, what it's telling us. Now, Many of us know, or some of us may not, there are four references to drinking the cup used by the Jews during the Passover meal. Four different references. The four cups of the Seder. And in fact, the word Seder translates to English meaning order. And the order of the cups correspond with Exodus chapter 6. Would you turn with me to Exodus 6, please? Exodus chapter 6, verse, I'm going to read verses 6 through 8. Says, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm, with great judgments. I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. In those three verses, we're going to see the four cups being described. Three of them in verse 6 alone. First cup, cup of sanctif sanctification. They're set apart. It says, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. 
They're sanctified. He's going to set them apart. Take them from where they are to a new place. Again, are we set apart? Set apart from the world. We've been taken out of the life we were living in. Through the blood of Christ, we're set apart. Second cup, cup of deliverance. To be set free. I will rid you, deliver you, out of their bondage. Again, talked about this on Sunday. We are free. We have freedom in Christ. We've been set free out of the bondage of sin. The bondage we've been living in, being a slave to it. We are free as well. The third cup, cup of redemption, or the cup of blessing, set for a purpose. So in verse 6, I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. To be redeemed. The blessing that that is, to be redeemed by God. The blessing that it is to be free of sin. We have purpose. We've been set on a course for that purpose because we've been set apart and set free. These things through the blood of Christ. Remember that on Sunday when you receive the cup. The fourth cup, the cup of praise, sets the future. Verses 7 and 8, I want to read them again. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I'll give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. Again. They are his. He is theirs. He will be their God. He will take them to their land. What he promised. What did Christ promise us if we believe? He promised us heaven. The cup of praise. Our future is set. We have that hope. He is our God. Christ is our Savior. And we have a set future for our purpose. Now, there is much debate among scholars about whether Jesus and his, and his disciples were celebrating a Seder meal on his last night. There were there were actually are countless arguments, people going back and forth. But the references to more than one cup in Luke make it very likely that he was. Uh, could you turn with me to Luke chapter 22, please? Which actually is kind of our main text. It takes a while to get there. When we're reading scriptures, we can't let very the various views of man draw us away from seeing God's message. In essence, unable to see the forest because of the trees. We can't get caught up in those views when we're trying to see the message of Scripture. We need to stay in Scripture. Our purpose, our focus, needs to be on the Word. And for this, our focus tonight is going to be on the cup, the cup of Christ and what that is for us. You see, within all four of the Gospels, Christ and his disciples preparing for the Passover meal. In Luke chapter 22, I want to read verses 14 to 20. Uh, verse 14 of Luke 22. It says, When the hour was come, he sat down with the twelve apostles with him. He said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. He took the bread and gave thanks and break it, gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. Notice verse 20. Luke mentions a cup, the second, or mentions a cup, a second time. This was after they had eaten. It says, cup after supper. 
This cup is symbolizing something new, something different, something they're not used to or ready for. In Scripture, Old Testament and New, we see God reveals more than what's in front of us. How many times does he reveal more than what we can see? We sometimes just see the surface and don't realize the depth below and how much is beyond what God is showing us. Many rituals, historical events, even everyday objects within God's power, within his word, point to something greater, so, uh, more meaning beyond the moment. They point to Christ. You can go through the Old Testament and see references to Christ. Arrows, signs pointing ahead to Christ. Again, it's beneath the surface. We have to see it. Again, within them, we have a better understanding one of our purpose, our being, but our hope as well. When we get beneath the surface, we stop just scratching at it and actually dig in. We see what he has for us. Beyond the physical cup, what's the meaning behind it? His promise, something new, something more. To the apostles, it may have started off as just a cup until he reveals what it is. Previous verses we read in Exodus, God promises to bring his people out. He promises to deliver them from bondage, to redeem them, to set them free. He promises to take his people and be their God. The cup is there to remind them there's more to come. The cup is here to remind us there's more to come. Don't just look back. The four cups pointed backwards to show what God had promised, what he had already done, to show who he was. But they also point forward to Christ. We see the parallels of how, again, we were freed, we were redeemed, we're set apart, we have hope, we have a future. The same message, the same illustration, the same order that he used before. The same way Christ follows this pattern with his disciples, shows them there's more. Yes, we've looked back. Now, I want to show you something new. In the midst of a world that was unpredictable and dark, does that sound familiar? Just look around you. The world is unpredictable. It's dark. As it was then, but God gave hope. Christ gave hope. He gives hope. In this world, we still have hope because that promise continues even for us. It's our purpose. We continue because of who he is. No matter how dark the world may be, we still have hope in him because of who he is. The same cup we use for the Lord's Supper helps us to remember what he did, what he did on the cross. But don't lose sight that it points forward as well. Because of what he did, we have a future. We have that hope. He did on the cross points to us that he is coming again, that we will be with him forever. Look at that. When we take communion this, week, this Sunday, his promise remains the same for anyone who places their faith and trust in him. Anyone. They will be set apart, set free, free of the grasp of sin, free of the grasp of death, separation from God, redeems us with a purpose and a future. That should give us hope. That should give us excitement to where we want to be overflowing, to be overfilled with that hope, with that love, to where it affects those around us because of what he's done for us. He promises to be our God be with us. It's there for us. The simple cup, we discover the truths that should cause our hearts to overflow. Turn with me to Psalm 23, please. You know, it seems like an odd place to go. Psalm 23. I'm going to go ahead and read the entire thing. 
all six verses of it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Listen to those words. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil because you are with me. Will not fear. Your rod, your staff, comfort me. You prepare a table in the presence of mine enemies, anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. It's overflowed with the presence of God. The sense of safety, the sense of comfort, the peace that he has. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're going to dwell with him forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. Shall abound, overflow us. Unless you can turn with me to Romans chapter 15, please. Romans 15, verse 7. I'm going to read verse 7 down through 13. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. The Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. It is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord all ye Gentiles and laud him all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. To abound in hope, to be overflowing with hope, confidence in God, confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, to be overflowing with that. It's our purpose. It's who we are. Now, if any of you are like me sometimes, Bible devotion time can be limited. Busyness in the day gets pushed aside sometimes. It's good to find ways, well, one, to make time, but to bring back the thoughts and lessons of God. Again, that's how we find our purpose. Digging beneath the surface, not just reading through, reading what's in front of you, going, okay, that was a nice passage, but to actually study it out, read it. And you can do it, the simple example of a cup, three letters, three words for each letter. Come up with your own. You've got Christ, unity, and peace. Just something to remember who we are, what our purpose is. And I challenge you, as you pour something into a cup today, the rest of this week, stop and pray. Take a moment. A prayer of thanksgiving for who God is, for what his cup represents. Let it overflow. Ask him to fill you with his spirit to where you're overflowing, affecting those around you. Next time you take a cup, just do that. Pause for a second. Let it remind you of the great purpose God has for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love. We thank you for your love that caused you to send your son to die for us, that we might have the freedom we've been talking about, that we would be able to be filled with you, your living waters would run through us like a river, overflowing, so that we might affect the world around us. We thank you for our purpose, for our calling. 
Thank you that we are free. And something as simple as a cup can remind us of what you've done. Do we not only look back to what you've done, but what you're doing for us now and what you've already done in the future. And we thank you for this and for this opportunity we have. Your son, in Jesus' name, amen.